Hi there, this is Alvin from Dr. Wealth. Today, I'm going to talk about seven high quality REITs with rising dividends. So if you are a REIT investor, be sure to watch this video. And the usual disclaimer, apply, pause and read it if you need to. What do I mean by high quality REITs? Of course, if you ask different investors, each of them will have a different definition. And for me, it's a quality REIT is a REIT that is able to raise dividend per unit or distribution per unit over a long period of time. And why is this important? Think about it because if a REIT is able to give you high dividend each year, it means that it needs to make more money. And how does a REIT make money? Mainly through rental. And that means that you need to raise rental on a consistent basis in order to pay you higher dividends. So in order for a REIT to do that, means that the quality of the properties are very high as well as the management is good and solid. Right, because if the management is able to squeeze the rent from the tenants every single year, uh, it has to mean that the management has some capability as well as the property must command a certain amount of quality. Because if you raise the rent too much, the tenants will eventually run away, right, and look for alternative uh, to rent. So it must be a combination of these two, and itself would be the key tenants of what a good rent is about. And uh, second thing is that we are in a rising interest rate environment and we know that when interest rate goes up, a lot of the other safer bond yields like Singapore government bonds and they give a higher yield at this point in time, right, as compared to the past. Right now you are yielding like probably 3%, 4% for the bills um, and uh, long-term bonds still at about 2 plus percent to 3%, okay. So these uh, interest rates are a lot higher compared to say last year or two years ago, which was closer to about probably 1%. Right, so now investors who are seeking use will have more to consider, more options to invest in. And if that is the case, why would they want to take higher risk to go for a dividend yielding REITs if they can take less risk investing in a government bond? So that is the second thing that uh, one has to contend with. And because REITs are also leverage kind of a business model, they borrow money to buy properties. And that means that rising rates would cause their financing charges to go up as well. It is important to also look at the debt profile of these REITs to make sure that rising rates do not impact them too much. And the third thing is that the high quality rate with rising dividends means that you enjoy the rising yield as you hold longer and longer because each year as the dividend per unit goes up, your yield on cost actually goes up as well. And when dividend growth is there, usually the share price will also give you some capital gain. That means that if you buy a high quality rate, you enjoy both dividend and capital gains and that increases your total gain altogether. So now let's look at these seven REITs. The very first REIT is the Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust and this REIT has grown their distribution per unit or DPU over the last 10 years at 6% uh, per year. Okay, so you can see that there are some uh, years that it may not be as uh, it may not be an increase, but overall you can see that there's this trajectory, upward trajectory of the dividend per unit growth. And this Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust was a merger between Maple Tree Commercial Trust and Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust. So you can see that the properties which used to be Singapore centric, um, Vivo City, M Maple Tree Business City 1 and 2, right, used to be the core assets of a Maple Tree Commercial Trust. Now it has added more overseas assets such as a festival walk in Hong Kong and also other couple of uh, properties in China, mainland China, Japan and South Korea. Okay, so but key assets are still in Singapore. In terms of the type of properties, you have a uh, retail at 44%, office at 35% of the assets, and business park at 21%. So it is a mixture of both a uh, retail and office, and it is quite geographically diversified in Asia as well. This Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust have a gearing ratio of 33.8%. This gearing ratio is healthy because uh, the limit is at 50% and there's still a lot of debt room to go. And which means that if this REIT decided to borrow more money to buy properties, it has the capability, it has the debt room to do so. And its uh, interest rate is just 2.53%. This is not high at all. A lot of commercial property mortgage rate now is it's like 3 plus percent if it's a variable rate and more than 4% if it's a fixed rate. So at 2.53% is considered low in this current environment. And in terms of the percent of debt with uh, fixed rates, it's actually very high at 78.6%. So that means that in the short term, it is unlikely that this REIT will face any pressure uh, when even the rate continue to hike. And we can see that 24% uh, of the debt is only due in year 2024 and another 24% due in year 2026. So in that case, um, the interest rate hike in this one, two years is not going to have a big issue for this um, Maple Tree Pan Asia commercial, right? And by 224, we should expect the interest rate to go back down. Otherwise, you know, the, the situation is really very bad in terms of inflation. Okay, so I'm all positive about that. 
And this is the performance for the past 10 years in terms of its total return. So this stock chart includes the dividend gains as well, not just the capital gains. So altogether, Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust have uh, returned 135% over 10 years or an annual return of about 8.9%. Okay, so it's rather good. Um, relative to STI, in this uh, same period is probably doing like five six percent per year right so maple tree pan asia commercial trust actually outperform it second REIT that passed the test is maple tree industrial and this is the second maple tree series in this uh, seven REITs itself and we also can see the distribution per unit has uh, compounded five percent per year over the past 10 years and the track record has been very solid every year it has managed to increase the dpu without fail even during the COVID year in 2020 so uh, this is a, a phenomenal track record in my view and they are of course focused on industrial properties and only recent years one or two years they started to move aggressively into data centers now data centers is more than 50 percent of their portfolio right 54.6 percent and majority of them are in north america okay and they do have other industrial properties right such as the flatter factories uh, light industrial building up to high-tech buildings okay so they have a range of these industrial property which are mostly in singapore in terms of its debt profile, it is also healthy, right? Giving ratio is way below 50% at 37.8%. Interest rate is slightly higher than Maple Tree Commercial, which is about 2.9%, okay, but it's still below that 3% uh, on a 3 plus percent variable interest rate at the moment. And majority of the debt is also at fixed rate. Okay, so this is another uh, good news. And in terms of the distribution of the debt maturity, you can see that majority of the debt is only due in year 2025 and beyond. So same conclusion in the sense that in the next one or two years, even if the rate hikes uh, continue to go on, Maple Tree industry is unlikely to get hurt, right? Because majority of the debt is fixed rates and the maturity is quite far away. So there will be a lot of time for the interest rate to normalize or even come back down before they refinance. This is the stock performance for the past 10 years. The returns are even more fantastic. 10-year total return of 202%, uh, inclusive of both dividend and capital gains. Annual return of 11.7%. Third in the list is Parkway Life REIT. So this uh, DPU growth has also been very consistent. Year, 20, 20, year 2015 and year 2017, you see a little bit of spike and then it came back down. It's because those two years, there were some special dividends given. But other than that, it's also a very consistent DPU growing kind of REIT out there. And it's compounded at 4% per year in the past 10 years. This is the property pro, uh, portfolio and uh, it's mainly made out of hospitals and nursing homes. So this is the most unique in this list okay because uh, there are not many hospital uh, read out there in the first place there's only another one which is first read but it didn't pass the test in this case and the hospital you can see is Glen Eagles Parkway East Hospital Mount E Hospital these are very well-known hospitals in Singapore uh, top private uh, hospitals and the customer clientele is in the region it's not just in Singapore right so many uh, people in the region who wants to seek good medical care they do come to singapore and they do go to these clinics specialist clinics or these hospitals another key thing is that the hospital operator is not going to move away from these uh, buildings even if the rent increase uh, one is that the sponsor of the read is actually the operator second is that uh, hospitals are very specialized building it doesn't mean that you want to move out you can just move out you need to really build another one that's uh, specialized for your operations otherwise there's really no place to move to so we can say that these hospital properties are the most stable kind of reads out there okay even their uh, lease is very long right they just renew a 20-year lease okay most of the other reads they renew lease in terms of two years or three years right so you can see the difference in terms of the stability of this kind of hospital reads and for the hospitals that are mainly in Singapore, the nursing homes are mainly in Japan. And it is it doesn't take a genius to know that Japan is a good place for nursing home due to its aging population. And the situation is just going to get worse, right? Because it was forecast that one in three Japanese is going to be age 65 and beyond by 2050. So the market is indeed a huge one. So Parkway Life Rate seems to be in a very good position, right? whether it's in Singapore or whether it's in Japan with its nursing home. This is the debt profile. You can see that the gearing ratio is 34.9%. It's not high. And the interest rate is a mere 0.53%. This is the lowest among the REITs that I have seen. And uh, one possible reason is because uh, they have nursing home in Japan and they are borrowing in yen and the interest rate in Japan is close to zero. So that is probably the key reason why Parkway Life Rate enjoys such a low interest rate. 
And if we look at the debt maturity profile, um, the ma majority of debt is not maturing until 2024 and beyond. So that means that, again, same situation, right? It is very unlikely that Parkway Life Read will suffer any uh, impact. Or I wouldn't say any impact. I would say that uh, it will not suffer a very big impact when the Fed raise the rates in this year or next, okay, because a very uh, a small amount of debt is maturing in these two years. This is the stock price performance. Over the past 10 years, the total return was 168% with an annual return of 10.4%. So it's pretty fantastic double-digit annual uh, return. Next would be Fraser's center point with a distribution per unit compounded annual growth of 4%. Okay, so you can see a dip in year 2020 that was where COVID happened and a lot of the shopping malls were closed due to all the uh, uh, measures that were imposed on uh, people staying at home right, and people are not going out to spend. So a lot of shops were closed as well. And this is uh, expected that the dividend dropped for that year, but it has since recovered. In 2021, the dividend per unit is even higher than the pre-COVID period uh, in 2019. So that's a good sign, right? And I believe that the growth trajectory has uh, restarted. This is the property portfolio, right? So Fraser Center Points uh, focus mainly on the suburban malls in Singapore. Okay, they only have Singapore properties. And these malls, some of you who are staying in Singapore will find them quite familiar, right? You might even be frequenting it, frequenting it uh, every week or so, right? So this, uh, uh, this suburban mall might even be more crowded than some of the malls in the cities, okay? Because uh, they usually are located at very high density residential areas where there are a lot of food for a lot of people going uh, to and fro from work. They will bypass these malls or they will just go to the mall to grab something that they need urgently, right? Rather than to travel all the way to the city to get the same thing that they could have get in these suburban malls. So this decentralization uh, has been happening, right? And uh, this uh, give a boost to these suburban malls for many years already. And the debt profile for Fraser Center Point is uh, healthy as well, except for one thing, okay? The one thing that I don't like so much is that you can see that the debt maturity profile, uh, 22, 3, 22, 4, and 22, 5, we see quite a, a significant amount of uh, debt to be refinanced, okay? And if they have to refinance in these few years, it is very likely that their interest rate of currently at 2.5% is unlikely to hold. It is likely that they have to um, uh, see a rise in the interest rate they are paying, right? So they may see more financing charges increment as compared to the other REITs with debt maturity that are further away from where we are right now. In terms of share price performance, 10 years, it has returned about 79%. And annual return is about 6%. So it's actually quite on par with the SDI performance in this case. Next read, we have Maple Tree Logistics Trust. This is the third Maple Tree read in this list. Okay, and actually there are only three Maple Tree uh, reads that are listed on SGX right now. And this is the third one. So it seems like Maple Tree have a lot of good things going on with them, right? Uh, even different reads are doing very well. So they have a DPU growth of about 3% per year in the past 10 years. Okay, so it's also very consistent in that basis. And the properties are, of course, logistic properties, and they're well diversified around Asia mainly, right? So Singapore is 20%, and Hong Kong, China, and together is about 44%, right? So that two, those two uh, countries would have a comprised majority of property. Then we have Japan, South Korea, Australia, Malaysia, Vietnam, India, right? So that's why I say it's quite well diversified in Asia. Um, there's no European or North American properties in this case. This is the debt profile, giving ratio at 37%, interest rate is reasonable at 2.5%, majority of the debt is at fixed rate, which is 82% of the debt is at fixed rate. And the debt profile, uh, again, not much, not much concern because uh, majority of the debt are only maturing in 22.5 and beyond, right? Between 22.5 and 22.8. Okay, so I would say that the recent rate hikes will have very little impact to Maple Tree Logistics. For stock performance, 10 years, return 156% or about 9.9% per year. Okay, another fantastic uh, track record once again. Next, we have Capital Land Ascenders REIT. This is uh, industrial REIT and the distribution per unit has compounded 1% per year in the past 10 years. You might be thinking 1%, it's not significant, but uh, it still passes the criteria in the sense that it still managed to grow its DPU, right? It's, although it's not as fast as the rest, okay? But again, that concept of ability to keep raising rent consistently is a sign of quality, right? So that's why it's still here. Majority of REITs can't even get into this list, right? So we only find seven out of 40 over REITs. So I would still say that a growth of 1% per year is still commendable. 
and this is the property portfolio and it has uh, 48% in business space and some life sciences lab 25% in logistic 27% in industrial and data center so it's really quite well that it's diversified kind of uh, industrial logistic kind uh, read itself and in terms of uh, geography 61% in Singapore uh, and it's more diversified beyond Asia right 15% in US 14% in Australia and 10% in Europe this is the debt profile. I think crucial to highlight, right? So it looks very healthy. And in terms of the debt maturity profile, it's uh, evenly spread, right? The maturity is every year is more or less the same uh, for the next 10 years or so. So the rate hike would only affect the recent year renewal, right? Refinancing, right? Other than that, uh, majority of the debt, I think, will be fine. Uh, waiting for the interest rate to fall again to refinance. In terms of stock performance, it has gone up about 102% for the past 10 years with an annual return of 7.3%. This also beat the SDI return. Last one, Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust. This is the largest REIT in SGX and it's also the very first REIT that was listed on SGX. So a lot of people quite like this, right? It's one of the popular REITs out there. Uh, DPU has grown 1% per year. Again, uh, similar to Capital Ascenders REIT, right? Uh, not very high, but still managed to grow, Consider commendable. Their properties involve uh, retail and office. This was due to the merger between Capital Land, Mall, Capital Land Mall Trust and Capital Land Commercial Trust, right? So then they started to merge this retail and office portfolio together. And they also have some integrated development, which includes both retail and office in the same building. Majority of the properties are in Singapore, right? 93% significantly. Um, the exposure to Germany is just 4%, exposure to Australia is just 3%. Okay, so it's not really geographically diversified, right? So you can see that all these seven REITs have a different kind of diversification, some more than the others. This is the debt profile, right? Something that I don't quite like is that the gearing ratio is on the higher side, 41.2%. So the debt room to 50% is uh, lesser. And we must remember this 50% is a temporary thing, okay? Because uh, in the in, uh, uh, actual limit is about 45%. Yeah, because due to COVID, the uh, um, MAS have allowed it to allow it to stretch it to fifty percent. But you never know, right? It might be lower to forty five percent. If so, then their debt room is really very tight, and that means that uh, rights issue might be very possible in order for them to reduce that gearing. Okay, but other than that, we can see that the debt maturity profile is also very evenly spread over the next uh, seven years, and which means that the rate hikes also unlikely to make a very big impact to capital land integrated commercial trust. In terms of stock performance, uh, it's, we can say that it's uh, the worst among the seven that we have seen so far, right? A uh, 10 year total return of 5.5%, that is inclusive of dividend gains, okay? So annual return of about 4.5%. So essentially, we can say that the, all the returns for this read actually came from dividends. There was almost no capital gain that came with it. And uh, given that SDI for this period is doing like 6% per year, uh, this actually underperformed, all right? The next thing that we want to talk about is how do you know whether these REITs are at a buyable price, right? Are they attractive to buy? Especially with interest rate going up, a lot of people are concerned. Uh, prices of REITs have fallen and have they fall enough? Is it the bottom already? Is it time to buy some of them? Are they undervalued? So there are a lot of these questions that comes about. So I want to share with you this concept called the bond REIT yield spread. So this is reported by SGX uh, on a, I think on a monthly basis, right? And uh, now the 10-year average bond read spread is about 3.83%. So what is this 3.83%? So in you can see in the chart the yellow line is the the yellow line is the 10 year Singapore government bond yield, okay? And the blue line is the read index forward dividend yield. All right? And the difference between this blue line and the yellow line is the spread that we are talking about. So this REIT dividend yield must definitely be higher than the government bond yield. Why? Because the REITs are riskier than the Singapore government bonds. So in order to compensate for the risk that investors are taking, they should be yielding at a higher point. Right? So it should be always be higher. And the difference should be stable. Okay? And the 10-year average is about 3.83%. Right? So in other words, the typical, a typical REIT is yielding 3.83% higher than the Singapore 10-year bond yield. All right? So that is the basis that we are going to use. Okay, so Singapore 10 year bond yield now is at 2.87%. The bond read yield spread is at 3.83%. Okay, but I wanted to give a discount to this 3.83%. The reason is because we are talking about high quality reads. High quality reads, their yields are usually not that high. And this bond yield, bond read yield spread includes all the reads out there, and which means that there are high yield reads. They are yielding maybe 10% or even more that pushes up this uh, uh, yield spread. 
So which means that high quality reads are unlikely to yield more than 10%. So we have to give a bit of discount to this use spread. So 30% off. So we add this use spread to the 2.87%, we'll get a minimum acceptable yield of 5.6%. So that means that a, a high quality read, uh, not any read, high quality read must yield above 5.6% now to consider it to be investable. Okay. So this is the table that I've done up, right? And another thing, important thing I must mention is that uh, it's not a historical U, it's a forward U. That means next year dividend U. Okay, and these figures can be taken from analyst estimates. Okay, so that is where uh, this forward U comes into play. And the benchmark is above 5.6%. So we can see Maple Industry Industrial Trust, Fraser Center Point Trust, Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust, and Capital Land Ascenders REIT. These four REITs are currently above 5.6% requirement. Okay, the rest are not there yet, right? So which means that uh, you should only consider those that are yielding higher and the quality are better as well, okay? So in summary, I do think that for those investors who prefer to buy and hold REITs for long term, it's very important to focus on high quality REITs. Because I know that yes, it's very attractive, those REITs that are yielding 10% or more, usually the problem will crop up eventually. So sometimes it's not worth the heartache and to see a certain event drive down the REIT price by a lot such that even the 10% you may not be able to cover the capital loss. Okay, So I do think that uh, if you want less heart attack, uh, high quality REITs are better for long term holdings. And what do we mean by high quality REITs? That means that they should have consistent DBU growth okay, over a long period of time, not just one year, two year. Okay, uh, for this uh, study, we did 10 years. And consistent DPU growth also means that it has great properties, good management that can continue to raise or jack up rent without chasing away the tenants. Okay, so this is a hallmark of a high quality REIT. Of course, we talk about other things like uh, the debt profile must be also reasonably good in this environment, rising interest rate environment. And uh, we covered all of them, right? To give you a sense of what do we mean by good debt profile. So we end up with uh, seven REITs that pass this quality test, right? Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust, Maple Tree Logistic Trust, Maple Tree Industrial Trust, Capital Land Ascendance REIT, Capital Land Inter Integrated Commercial Trust, Fraser Center Point Trust, and Parkway Life REIT. And we also talk about a bit of that valuation, right? How would I see what is a acceptable yield? Okay, so we use the Singapore 10-year bond yield, right? If this 10-year bond yield continue to go up, the minimum acceptable yield will also go up. Okay, so that's how it works. And we add this to the bond yield, bond read yield spread. So we add them together, we'll get a minimum acceptable yield. That is where we should aim for to lock in the yield for a high quality read. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel so that you'll get more good stuff like this. This is Alvin. I'll see you again. Goodbye.